Good evening. You're watching the news at 7.30 on ATV. I'm Emily Sue. And I'm Bo Leung. Here's a look at tonight's top stories. Police use pepper spray in Yunlong as opponents of parallel trading clash with residents. Elderly man who contracted H7N9 dies in hospital, the first Hong Kong fatality this winter. DAB says majority will accept political reforms even if they conform with Beijing's tight framework. Police have resorted to pepper spray to stop clashes in Yunlong between people protesting against the influx of mainlanders and residents of the border town. A number of people were injured or arrested during the violent protests, the latest in the new territories in recent weeks. ATV's Arthur Okiola reports. There was chaos in the streets of Yunlong this afternoon as local residents scuffled with scores of protesters targeting mainland parallel goods traders. Police were caught in the middle as they tried to keep the two groups apart. Tension grew in the town close to the border as soon as members of radical groups Civic Passion and Frontline Democracy began leaving Longping Station ahead of their protest. They were given a hostile reception by Yunlong residents, worried that their normal Sunday peace would be shattered. This woman who lives in Yunlong was blunt. She branded the protesters as troublemakers and told them to get out of her neighborhood. Residents blamed the protesters for trying to sabotage her livelihood by abusing mainland visitors who provide brisk business to shops in the area. The confrontation outside the station delayed the start of the march, the latest aimed at the growing number of mainland visitors who cause overcrowding and parallel traders whose activities create shortages of essential goods and push up prices. Police had a hard time maintaining order. When the march finally began, angry residents on South Fu Street made their voices heard. Every other shop on the long stretch of road is a pharmacy. The protesters claimed that instead of catering to locals, the pharmacy stocked goods for parallel traders to smuggle across the border. Many shops pulled down their shutters as noisy demonstrators, some holding colonial era flags, approached. Safu Street witnessed the worst unrest today. Cars found it hard to get through the clogged street. In the midst of the chaos, an ATV reporter and the cameraman caught up in the protest were hit by pepper spray as police tried to control the crowd. Why did you pepper spray me? demanded ATV's Terry Khan. I was holding a microphone, so you should know that I'm a reporter. Last month, similar rallies in Tunmun and Sha Tin also resulted in scuffles, prompting police to resort to pepper spray to restore order. With protests like this one and Yunlong today becoming a regular occurrence, politicians of all shades are demanding a reduction in mainland visitors and a ban on parallel traders. Chief Executive Lung Chenying and local delegates will raise the issue when China's top legislature and political advisory body meet in Beijing later this month. Arthur Rikiola, ATV News. Three people were arrested during the scuffles, according to the chairman of the Yunlong District Council. Leung Chi Cheng praised police for exercising restraint and acting swiftly to prevent clashes between residents and protesters from getting out of hand. He described demonstrators as troublemakers who forced the closure of more than 30 shops. Leung added that the unrest has given Yunlong a negative image. The unrest forced the diversion of more than a dozen bus routes. Like other border towns, Yunlong has experienced a surge in the number of mainland shoppers and parallel traders. The main attraction for mainlanders in Yunlong is Pharmacy Row, a line of shops that cater to cross-border shoppers. Which is close to the Shenzhen Bay immigration checkpoint has seen the number of mainland visitors shooting up in recent years. But instead of sightseeing, the mainlanders mainly go shopping, snapping up daily necessity items such as baby milk formula, diapers and other personal care products. That gave rise to dozens of pharmacies on Salfu Street, with an infant formula wholesale city receiving the most attention. The two-storey shop, set up in July last year, appears to specifically target cross-border shoppers by offering a delivery service to the mainland. 
before rolling down the shutters this afternoon because of the protests. The shop did brisk business, catering to mostly Potonghua speaking customers. This man from the mainland showed our reporter what he bought cosmetics, milk formula, and even body wash products. He finds the shop convenient because it stocks all the items he wants. The pharmacies attract not only individual shoppers, but also parallel traders who drag trolleys and even suitcases to haul away their goods. This woman complained that she cannot buy all her daily necessities because the shops in the area have been converted to pharmacies. But others were more accommodating. This woman said there should be freedom in business and she prefers the area to be bustling rather than quiet. As expected, the rowdy protests this afternoon took a toll on business. This pharmacy worker said it was relatively quiet all day and even local residents avoided the area because of the protests. In today's other news, an elderly man who contracted the H7N9 strain of bird flu has died, becoming the first fatality in Hong Kong this winter. The death prompted health chief Koei Man to urge people not to handle live poultry when visiting the mainland. ATV's Alison Chan reports. A 61-year-old man who is believed to have contracted the deadly H7N9 strain of bird flu during a visit to Guangdong died this morning in Queen Mary Hospital. The man fell ill after going to Dongguang twice last month. On one occasion, he bought two chickens that were slaughtered at a wet market. It was the third case of imported human bird flu in Hong Kong this winter and the only fatality. A 79-year-old man who had been tested positive for H7N9 in January has been discharged from hospital, but a 69-year-old woman remains in critical condition in Princess Margaret's hospital. The death at the height of the flu epidemic prompted Health Secretary Ko Wingman to warn the public to be vigilant against avian and seasonal flu. There are still places, uh, in, especially in mainland China, uh, which is affected by H7 and 9. And uh, if our citizens are traveling to these places, uh, I would like to appeal to them again uh, to uh, please avoid uh, coming into contact with um, uh, wild birds, live poultry, or visiting places or markets where uh, live poultry are on sale. More than 150 people on the mainland have been affected by the virus since October. Alison Chan, ATV News. A survey by the pro Beijing DAB shows that more than 60% of respondents are willing to accept the government's political reform package, even if it conforms with Beijing's tight framework. The results of the poll were released one day after Chief Executive Leung Chenying made a similar claim without specifying the source of his figures. Chief Executive Leung Chenying unleashed a storm of controversy yesterday when he said more than half of Hong Kong people are willing to accept Beijing's tight framework on the city's political reform. The ruling handed down by the National People's Congress in August last year triggered a massive protest that paralyzed parts of the city for more than 11 weeks. Leung said his claim was based on polls done by the government and different social groups, although he didn't give details. But this morning, the pro-establishment DAB released the result of its latest poll with figures that matched the chief executives. According to the DAB, more than 60 percent of the 800 people it interviewed want LegCo to endorse the government's reform package for the 2017 chief executive election, even if it conforms with Beijing's tight rules. About 30 percent said they want LegCo to reject the proposal even if it leads to a halt in constitutional development. The survey also found that 83 percent of respondents want lawmakers to vote on the reform proposal according to the views of the majority of the population. Young DAB chairman Holden Chow told the 27 Pan Democratic lawmakers who have vowed to veto the reform bill to take this into account. We all understand that the, uh, the decision by the NBC cannot be changed or removed. So this is a, a fact. The majority of Hong Kong people believe that this is the right time to pocket uh, the uh, political reform and uh, to follow, uh, very pragmatic, to follow the uh, 31st of August decision by NBC. Executive Council convener Lan Wun Kwong added his views, saying the polls he examined show that nearly half of Hong Kong people want to choose their leader via one person, one vote in 2017. He also urged opposition lawmakers to respect and listen to the wishes of the people and not to be stubborn. 
Turning overseas, a march by opposition supporters is underway in Moscow in memory of Kremlin critic Boris Nepsov, who was shot dead on Friday. Nepsov's supporters suspect the government was behind his death, but President Vladimir Putin said he'll leave no stone unturned in the hunt for the killers. ATV's Joyce Wu reports. Mourners have been gathering on a bridge in Moscow in an outpouring of grief. Thousands of Russians laid flowers and lit candles at the spot where opposition leader Boris Nemtsov, a fierce critic of President Vladimir Putin, was shot dead on Friday. While Putin condemned the murder as vile and cynical, many of his opponents claim it was a political killing. I would say this is not only a blow to the opposition, it is a blow to Russia, said another opposition leader, Sergei Mityorkin. If political views are punished this way, then this country simply has no future. World leaders, including Ukrainian President Petro Poroshenko, also condemned the murder and pinned the blame squarely on the Russian government. Poroshenko claimed Nemtsov was killed because he planned to disclose evidence of Moscow's role in the conflict in East Ukraine between government forces and pro-Russian separatists. A shaky ceasefire is taking hold in eastern Ukraine, but Putin has repeatedly dismissed Western claims that Moscow is helping the rebels with arms and soldiers. The Russian leader argued that the crisis in Ukraine began when the West engineered the overthrow of its pro-Moscow president. Putin has described Nemtsov's murder as a provocation and vowed to the victim's mother that the killers will be brought to justice. Joyce Wu. ATV News. In other world headlines, three teenage British schoolgirls have been caught on camera taking a bus to Syria, reportedly to join the extremist group Islamic State. The first in a world rap, Venezuela says it has arrested some suspected American spies. Venezuela's leftist president Nicolas Maduro is on a collision course with the US. At a massive rally in Caracas, he told the supporters that a number of U.S. citizens, one of them a pilot, have been detained on suspicion of spying. Maduro, who has accused Washington of trying to topple him, added that the U.S. embassy in Caracas will be told to reduce its staff. The opposition claimed that the president is trying to create fear in the South American state to cover up a shortage of essential goods. Venezuela's economy took a hit after oil prices fell sharply last year. South Korea has celebrated the 96th anniversary of its independence from Japanese colonization. To mark the occasion, President Park Geun-hye issued a challenge to Tokyo. I hope Japan acknowledges the historical truth courageously and writes a new history with South Korea, she declared in Seoul. South Korea is demanding a resolution of the sex slave issue in which thousands of women were forced to work in Japanese military brothels. Three British schoolgirls are now believed to have reached Syria, where they reportedly plan to join the militant group Islamic State. The three were seen on closed-circuit TV pictures at a bus station in Istanbul. It's believed that the London schoolgirls travelled from the Turkish city to Syria 10 days ago. Joyce Wu, ATV News.